First, I would like to thank Seth Ironweb, Junior Jose, and Ray Yu from our audience for comments and emails about this new research on this NAD transporter. NAD levels decline with age, and administration of NAD precursors like NMN is currently being tested in the clinic as a measure to prevent age-associated diseases. So understanding the flux of NAD in the cell is of great importance. So far, it has not been clarified how mitochondria within our cells gain access to NAD. This week, a paper was released which identified a transporter that moves NAD into the mitochondria. Let me start with a little background. Here is an illustration of a typical mammalian cell. Inside the cell, along with other organelles, are the mitochondria. I have just outlined two of them near the top of the cell. Two papers we will look at today are looking at how NAD from the main area of the cell gets into the mitochondria. First of all, why is this a question? Mitochondria, just like cells, have membranes around them. This is an illustration of a cell membrane, but one for a mitochondria is very similar. Molecules like NAD, which are large and contain phosphate groups, can generally not pass through this wall. However, there are transporters that provide a passage for certain molecules. And why is this important? The mitochondria are often called the powerhouses of the cell, and they are involved in many activities. One of these is the key reactions evolved in the breakdown of sugars and fats to release energy. And these reactions require NAD, so providing abundant NAD to our mitochondria is very important. With that in mind, back in 2018, a team did the initial work to show that a transporter was involved. As they say, NAD levels are key to a number of mitochondrial activities which affect the cell. And at the time, it was not clear where the NAD in the mitochondria come from, whether it was made from an imported precursor such as nicotinamide or NMN, or brought in as NAD. In this paper, they show that in mice and humans, it was mostly brought in as intact NAD. Originally, it was believed that the molecules such as NAD could not cross the mitochondrial membrane, but they showed that it does, although they did not identify which transporter was being used. Two days ago, another paper came out which identified SLC25A51 as this transporter. The authors are actually working on a larger project to determine the function of a number of solute carrier proteins, or SLCs, which had not yet been characterized and how they function in combination. Within this work, they have demonstrated that a specific transporter, called SLC25A51, is the enabler of mitochondrial import of NAD. I did want to contrast this with the transporter SLC12A8, which was reported in this paper in March 2019 by Dr. Imai and his team from Washington University. There's a new, newly discovered transporter for NMN. It came out of um, Dr. Shin Imai's lab uh, mm -hmm. at Wash U Medical School, um, and I wrote a News and Views uh, article on it. At the time, Dr. Sinclair also wrote an article on the new transporter. Here we see the diagram from the article by Dr. Sinclair. The SLC transporter is in blue. We can see that this moves NMN across the cell membrane and into the cell, where it can be converted into NAD. The transporter that has been identified in the new paper is the orange one at the top, which moves the NAD that is present in the cell across the boundary and into the mitochondria. In conclusion, here are some comments from the lead researcher in the latest paper. The results have been confirmed by two other independent studies, and by understanding the process of how NAD gets into the mitochondria, it opens up the opportunity to influence the content of NAD in the organelle. NAD is associated with many physiological and pathological processes such as aging, neurological diseases and the metabolism of cancer. And at the same time it offers therapeutic potential from the possibility of modulating the NAD content in the mitochondria through the transporter. I think it is interesting that the NAD levels in the mitochondria appear to be linked to that in the cell in this way, and it seems to show that if our efforts to increase our NAD levels in our cells work, then this will also impact the NAD levels in our mitochondria.